Hi, greetings, and welcome to my first ever live stream. My name is Grant Hoddle. This is Observational Drawing, and today I want to talk a little bit about chiaroscuro, or the tones of light across a sphere. Uh, this method of drawing and depiction was made popular in the Renaissance by artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, and um, it's something that you're going to use a lot in this class. Uh, your first project uh, focuses almost exclusively on this, so let's get started. What you're looking at here is um, a really quick drawing that I did of a sphere. Uh, generally, I recommend that everybody be able to do one of these, um, that you be able to basically uh, quickly uh, sketch out a, a sphere, do some subtle shading on it, and identify for yourself um, these six points of light um, that are defined in chiaroscuro. By the way, chiaroscuro is spelled like this, chiaroscuro. It's from Italian, chiaro meaning dark, and I'm, I'm sorry, light, <laughs> and oscuro meaning dark. So light and dark, pretty simple. Um, by the way, I can tell that my screen is giving a bit of a lag on this. My apologies for that. Um, we will just continue as if that's not happening. Um, okay, so in this case, your basic moves are to start sketching your sphere. I'm gonna do another one, move my screen just a little bit and uh, give you a, a quick rundown of how I go about this. Good enough, okay. So what I do first is I lightly mark in where I want my sphere to be. Um, don't worry too much about anything being correct. And I start setting a light source. Now in this case, I'm thinking of the same light source as the image above, so a top right light source. And I'm thinking about where my darkest part of my sphere is going to fall. Kind of correct some of my crazy not circular ball at the start of this. Okay, now here is where, and I'm gonna kind of think about a tabletop back behind it. Um, so this is where uh, an easy first step needs to happen, and that's to decide that your darkest part, the core of shadow, is usually on a sphere, if it's sitting on a light surface, like a white table, uh, not on the furthest edge of that object. The core of shadow is actually inside that moment a little bit and we're going to talk about this in a second but it's because of a reflected light that's bouncing back up off of the table and causing that to happen now i'm using my finger to smear some of this out a little bit that helps it's a good method it softens your focus a little bit uh, lets you kind of get a little bit more gray knocks down the lightness of the paper a touch as you go so now i have a basic set of shading uh, starting to happen and just for the sake of kind of understanding a little bit more of where this sphere is hitting the table. I'm gonna throw in a cast shadow. And let that kind of blend out to the side. And now I'm gonna take my eraser. This is a kneaded eraser, uh, gray. Uh, you should have one of these in your kit. And uh, you can also use a white eraser, a pink pearl if you want, but I'm gonna use this guy and lighten up a little bit of my light area and clean up a little bit around where I kind of made a mess with my finger. And I'm gonna grab my white Stedler eraser and kind of focus in a little bit more light in there as well. Okay, I'm gonna soften some of this up a little bit. I'm drawing with Prismacolor colored pencils. They don't erase uh, very well compared to like a number two or a series of graphite. This is like a harder binder in there, which means that they tend to stick to the paper a little bit more. It's waxier, so you have to press a little harder if you're going to get um, eraser marks to show. Um, but I also have a white Prismacolor pencil that I will use to increase a little bit of the light source inside there as well. So I'm going to kind of work a little bit of light back in, cross my light section, bounce in a touch of reflected light, and let's throw a highlight in there. Highlight is the brightest spot on any given surface, and it's actual reflection of your light source. So you can spot it 
in whatever it is that you're drawing and you can work from it from there. And throw in a little bit of light back behind my object. Give that table a little bit of lightness around it. Should make it look pretty good. So this white surface that I'm depicting here is what is causing this reflected light to bounce back into the underside of the ball. And it's actually that little bit of light kind of popping into the other side of an object that really helps to define the roundness of the object. Because now instead of the ball stopping at the dark point out here, we actually are allowing your eye to kind of start to see around the other side of it. Uh, if you look up at my face in, in this image up here, because I have two light sources, something very similar is happening. I have a really strong direct light on one side and uh, uh, on this side over here, and then a slightly less strong light on this side. So you see a core of shadow basically right down the center of my face right there, and that's causing a lot of roundness uh, around the side of my head. So the same thing's happening with our ball here. Pretty simple, and I'm going to wrap this up. So once again, now I have six points of light. Uh, kind of move my screen down a little bit and you can see them all. So I have light. The light section is this whole area right here, wherein um, basically the light of the whole room is striking the ball. Then I have highlight. That's the brightest spot of the ball right here. Uh, again, the reflection of whatever your actual light source is. And then I have shadow that kind of encompasses this whole dark side of the ball. Core of shadow, the very darkest place, the point between your light and the reflected light. Your reflected light bouncing back up from the table and your core of shadow from the outside. Okay, thank you. That'll uh, bring us to the end of our chiaroscuro discussion. Please uh, send me any questions or comments that you have uh, either in the chat function below or uh, online later. Okay, thanks so much. Talk to you soon.